They tell me all the time, well, they ain't gonna let you through the door. I'm like, well, I'm gonna go through the chimney, I'm gonna go through a window. <laughs> Most of us worrying about how much money I make, I'm like, no, I'm gonna create an idea, because the idea is gonna create the wealth. When I seen that Michael Jackson cooled off, I know hip hop artists are gonna cool off. Once you get good at something, take advantage of it, because you're not gonna be hot forever. This insurance thing is so big because you die, you're gonna make me a millionaire. Now, we, in every hood, we got millionaires popping up. All right, guys, hey, congratulations. You've separated yourself from everybody with inside the uh, 2,000 people we have here to have a conversation with Master P. This is our mastermind, first time we're ever doing it. So you guys have a question to ask Master P, and Master P, we ask that you keep uh, your answers to 60 to 90 seconds because we got a lot of people going around, otherwise we'll be here for yes, another sir. five hours. Yes, sir. So uh, if you have your question ready and prepared, and I'd like to have the first one, David Seco, what you got? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, an amazing hour that we got to see there. But my, my question is, Throughout the years you've been building leaders, you've encountered different stages where people get complacent, comfortable, you get to identify people's visions, money sometimes basically mm -hmm. gets people comfortable. What happens when there's no pain driving people? How do you get people to move when they get too comfortable? Well, the thing about it is uh, you should always know that you should be uncomfortable. And I think a lot of people get caught up, and it's, on, it's, it's the people that you're around. I told y'all that earlier. You want to be around people that's going to push you. So you got to push the people, and it's, it's almost like watching Kobe Bryant. Like, he get mad at people that, like, man, if I'm in the gym early working and you're not doing nothing, you don't need to be on my team. So it's your church. Like, it don't make sense to you to keep trying to carry somebody that don't want to do what you're doing. So for me, is you got to let people be themselves. Like, I'm not going to carry somebody. I'm going to show you. I'm going to push you. But if you're not going to run with me, I tell you all the time, then you want to be a turkey look like a, a bird, an eagle, because they all are birds, mm -hmm. but an eagle fly high, and the eagle going to be alone most of the time. I wanna, I'm probably going to be alone if you don't get it. I'm going to push you, try to make you see it, because I want you to, to get what I get, but I can't make you. So mm -hmm. I, I just think you gotta, that person got to have We talked about consistency today. They got to want it. They got to want it. You can't want it for somebody. You got to know when it's time to cut people off. I have a question about raising kids. So you, you've got some years under your belt of raising kids, and you got kids in their 20s, kids who are coming up in their teens. And I saw on stage you, you referenced Romeo yeah. and your, your, your sons now, and you said you want to show your kids the pain or yeah. show them what you're going through. Yeah. So when there isn't a lot of pain, because, I mean, maybe there is pain in your life at certain times, but you're no making money. What you have. You're going to have. You're going to have pain. You're going to have adversity so give me an example of someone who's doing well making good money but still showing kids pain coming up in that yeah so think about this if you don't even if you're doing well and you don't let your kids go through the adversity then that's when you're gonna have these differences because think about it, that was my problem i wanted to make I, all my first kids i made sure they have everything that they wanted mm -hmm. was that right there's no blueprint on parenting right but it also going to catch up with you in the long run because when, when one day it's gonna be, well, man, I can't do this right now, or we're not gonna do this. No, we've been doing this. So that's what you gotta prepare for. That's why I'm saying this generation, I'm teaching hard work and educating them, and I'm letting them see, okay, uh, even in sports with my kids, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna be there to support you, but I'm not doing this for you. I'm not gonna be that parent to be your cheerleader. Or be, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be the guy to push you, because. As you advance, as my kids advance, they need to know that they have a daddy and not a friend. And I just think a lot of us try to be friends because we're successful. So you're going to have the problem down the, down the line, which your kids are going to hold you hostage. A lot of rich parents, their kids turn. A lot of my rich friends say, my kids try to hold me hostage or say this stuff about me. And I got to deal with this every day because they feel entitled. For the comparison to what other the other kids have or do or somebody else next door. So that's why I don't like the word comparison, because that's what a lot of successful parents are going to deal with. Kids always comparison and being entitled. So they're going to be easier to take high risk. Thank you. Yeah. I so honor what is on your life and what you've yeah. done and just the stewardship. I so appreciate you being here. As you talk about raising leaders and raising the next generation, you've got to be able to identify talent, yeah. who to invest time into. You yeah. mentioned Snoop being your best student. Yeah. What are the two, three, four, five things you look for if you're going to lock on to somebody? I'm looking for hunger. Yeah. I'm looking for integrity. I'm also looking for hard work. And so if you have that, that's what I want to lock into because everybody think they have that. 
until they see what it really is. Think about it. Like, so are, are you going to are you going to be the same way that I tell you no? And if I tell you, yeah, it's even family members that you could be like, oh, I'm going to give you this, give you this. Then one, well, you say you don't have one. No, I say I don't have it. Well, you know how much money you got? What do you mean? So now you count my pockets? I don't need people like that to be around me. If I say I don't have it, I don't have it. I, I might invest it in some business or brought a whole bunch of product this week. My cash flow might be low. So me giving you what you want for leisure, and I'm trying to invest into something to build that you could have something later, but you impatient. I definitely don't want people that's impatient around me because there's a lot of people that don't want. They have talent everywhere, but you have to be patient to have talent. It's not going to happen overnight. No Limit did not happen overnight. When people look at No Limit, like even my music career did not happen overnight. I went through so much adversity. So my thing is don't be afraid to go through the adversity. And that's the red flag when you find out people that just, oh, yeah, we're going to make millions of dollars. My, my question is, what if we don't make it? Where are you going to be at? Are you still going to be around? I'm still going to be your friend. I'm still going to be your homie when we didn't make it. Yeah. We only cool when we made it. Like, think about it. If you guys get out here and work and get an insurance, do all this stuff, everybody, when, when it's good, what about when, oh, ain't nothing happening, man, we can't, we ain't doing nothing. It's, it's slow for us. Oh, well, you ain't really popping. <laughs> <laughs> you going to have to be around me when it's not popping for me to know what you, you know, who you really are. And that's why I keep saying about integrity. It's so important because you got to be able to see through these people. Thank you again for, yeah. for the opportunity. So my question is, you were an athlete first, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, in our community, you, you told only a couple different things you're supposed to do, either, you know, sell drugs yep. or, you know, be in music or be an athlete. So I chose athlete route as well. So mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the mentality is when you took that loss of being injured mm -hmm. to figuring out what should I do next? Like, how did you not lose your identity well, in so, that world? So I'm going to tell you all, right, by me being an athlete, I build everything I do around teamwork. So even if I don't make it in the sports side, in the business side, it makes me a monster because I learned hard work. I learned drive, determination, consistency. I have to get up every morning and do this. So why can't I do it with my business? Like I tell my sons, y'all gonna be the greatest businessmen because of what y'all learned on this basketball court in that locker room, being with a team. If you're gonna build a company or a brand, you guys are gonna be way past me because now you know what that hard work is. You can't teach that. And you learn that having a coach, being able to play your role. It made me the most dangerous business person in the world. Cause like, like think about it, even that, I'm, I'm always doing what I gotta do. I'm thinking how to come overcome this adversity I might lose. So what do you learn the most from? Losing. Yeah. You don't learn from winning. Yeah. You learn from losing. Every time I lost, I, I took those failures and, and, and took those L's as lessons. I never took it as a loss. I'm like, let me get out here and figure this out. Every time I stumble, it's like, I'm get back up and keep running. That's what I did. And so you learn that from sports. So you take that, the same thing that you put into, because only 2% going to make it. Yep. Think about it. That's what athletes don't realize. Yeah. Once you know that two, at least you got this. I don't care what else, whatever you think, 2% of y'all going to make it. That's it. So that 2%, you better be, I tell my son, like, you know what? You better be dangerous. You don't want to go that badly trying to make it. So, so not take what you put in. That's, that's not a loss. Everything that you learn, the team effort and, and all that, what, what you learn. Now you take that and apply that to whatever company, whatever job, or you being an entrepreneur, creating and building your own brand. Use that because that's the blueprint. That's the blueprint. I, every time I fell, I got back up in sports. Same thing in business. It's like getting on a horse. You're going to fall off that horse. Think about it, no matter what, you're going to fall to some idea. I tell you all the time, it's not about the money that's going to create the wealth. It's the idea. And so most of us worrying about how much money I make. I'm like, no, I'm going to create an idea because the idea is going to create the wealth. So, yeah, and sports has a lot to do with it. I mean, most people that know sports, they could go run a company. They could build a company. And that's, that's what I do because everything I do is having the right team. So I, I have the right team around me. It's not just about me. Like my team is strong and, and it ain't it don't have to be that many people. So everybody think they need a thousand people. You don't. you need good people that believe in what you believe in. And that's how you build that team, because, you know, and then you could go build the numbers and add other people. But I'm talking about that circle 
that circle gonna be strong and tight, the people that just believe. Master P, man, appreciate you. I can relate, you was talking about some murder capitals of the world, I'm from Chicago, yeah. South yeah. Side. <laughs> yeah. And um, you talked about consistency, yeah. right? You used to put out records every week. Yeah. Man, I mean, yeah. you had a run, it was consistent. What was, yeah. the, what was the work behind the scenes for you to put that great of music out every single week from multiple artists? And you talk about in our business, we have a thing called a perfect week. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that gets us to the next level. Like, what were some of the things that, that you worked on, no matter your, no matter what, every week, to make sure that you put out that quality music for a long stretch? Yeah, like, so, you got me through college. So what I realized, <laughs> you, you know what I realized? Uh, once you get good at something and, and you hot, take advantage of it, because you're not going to be hot forever. Mm -hmm. So everybody think that they're going to be doing this forever. When, when, when I seen that Michael Jackson cooled off, I know. Hip-hop artists are going to cool off. I don't care how hot they are. So now I started putting my work in. Let me make as much as I can make and get it out there and get it when I'm hot. And so especially, like you said, if you come from Chicago, I come from New Orleans, you know, at that time, New Orleans was the murder capital of the world, and we ain't even had as many people y'all had in Chicago. Think about it. Y'all had 8 million people in Chicago. We had 700,000 people. And we was the murder capital of the world. And so that's why I talk about this insurance thing is so big because if, imagine if we put a policy on all those guys that just the 400 people that's dying in Chicago, the 400 people that's dying in New Orleans, that's $800 million right there. Uh, all new millionaires. It won't be that much crime in Chicago no more. It won't be that much crime in New Orleans no more. Because now think about it, once you get some money, you got something to live for. <laughs> Think about it. Even if your kids don't want it, the parents are going to have these policies. And, be, and that's what you guys have to be able to sell to these parents. There you go. That, you know, $50 a month, like we buy Jordans, we buy all this Gucci, <laughs> all this stuff. Let's be honest. Come on. You can't take $50 and put on your child or your child can't take that and put on they self if they're over 18. Like that's the what we have to see. And I think that's because I started thinking about this. I'm like. How do we eliminate this crime and us being the murder capital? I think that's the only way. Because you know now, like, everybody got insurance. Okay, well, you die, you're going to make me a millionaire. <laughs> I, you might not listen to me. <laughs> think about it. You might not listen to me. Right. But now, we, in every hood, we got millionaires popping up. Now the kids going to start doing right. Oh, no, I ain't trying to die. I'm going to put me a million on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool as me. Right? Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> So that I mean, I, I'm just seeing, man, because everybody, you know, we blame everything on the police. I feel like we got good police and bad police. I want to be around the good police. Mm -hmm. I got relatives that's police. So it ain't them. And I got some relatives that's bad police. I don't hang around them. <laughs> the ones that's good, I want to be around them because you need them. Think about it. When somebody get killed, you can call the police. Yeah, Wait sure. up. You want to call the police now? Right. You were just telling me I ain't cool. To, uh, I don't need the police. So I'm like, what is it? That's why we need insurance. I bet you had insurance. I told you something, when I guy hit my car, I got a cousin. I'm like, dude, you know I got insurance on this car. Like, I don't need to fight this guy. Man, you need to get out and whoop for what? <laughs> I'm about to whoop him with this money. <laughs> I get out happy. Sir, you know you hit me. Yeah, I was in the wrong. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Write that down. Right. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom. That's, That's it. Wisdom. That's it. Nice to meet you, Master P. Yes, um, sir. Just a quick question for you. Um, one thing that I noticed in growing up from, like, um, I got the hookup yeah. to the jerseys, yes. to the shoes, to the drinks, everything. What is one? What are some couple things you would say as far as, like, becoming, like, the mayor of your city and multiple cities where you're getting your message out? Because mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm from Chicago as well, but I'm in Arizona. Yeah. And I noticed that no matter where you were at, we yeah. knew who you were. Yeah. So what are some things that you would say is the best way to get your message out so people know exactly who you are and what you do? Well, to me, I've always been a person that never thought I was a star. I've always thought that I need to touch the people. Wherever I go at, I need to be a part of the community, and I want to help the kids. The only way I could build future leaders is start with education and show the kids because a lot of the older people, so my thing is, if I touch the kids, then the parents are going to want to be around. And I've always just touched the kids. You know, my heart has always been pure for the next generation. I like dealing with the younger kids. I feel like they're innocent. I feel like uh, they're not going to complain. They're not looking for nothing. They want people to spend time with them. And so I always deal with the little younger kids or the, or the elderly. 
because I feel like people forget about the older people in the community. That's the wisdom. And so I kind of like every city, I build relationships at that level and deal with foundations and just stay in the community. So I think that that has always been my strength. I think that's why I'm still relevant today because it's not about music. I haven't put out music in 15 years. So, uh, and, and that's not my calling. I mean, I love music. Music was the thing that got me into the door, but I feel like that wasn't it for me. So that's why I tell people, how do you measure success or wealth? It's not about money. It's what you do with what you have, what you give. So all these guys you see putting their money up on the screen and all, man, we got credit cards, man. We don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> no. <laughs> we got credit, man. Credit, credit. Think about it. Credit is more important than money. You can have a lot of money. A lot of my guys that I grew up with in the community, they had money. They couldn't buy nothing. Yeah, they had no credit. Bad report card. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Um, yeah. be, you're, you're probably one of the first to come up with the, the branding, um, and I'll say more of a. Um, they call it peacocking. Like I yeah. remember your CDs coming out, yeah. and they'll pop off. Like you yeah. can walk into a record store and you see, boom, Master P, and yeah. only because of bright colors. What, what was part of that? Like what made you like go from like use the bright colors? I wanted yeah. to choose that. So I learned that in my 30 days I spent in college. <laughs> <laughs> so Great my professor, <laughs> my professor taught me. That was the first thing he taught me. Right? He was like. Look at McDonald's, those big red colors, yellow and all this stuff, like it stops you. And he told us why it stops you and why these colors are so important. When he taught me that, I realized that now I got to, with my music and my CDs, whatever I do, I have to stop people. And so I've always thought of the big bright colors, even when, so back in the days how I did, so No Limit was a regular logo and I had a Rolex watch with the diamonds in it and uh, I went to this company, I said, the company said, we could do anything in your logo. I said, well, can you put diamonds in my logo? He said, what? I said, yeah, diamonds. What do you mean diamonds? I said, I'm going to take a picture of my watch. Can you make my logo look like this? And the guy said, sure. It took him a long time, but when he finally got it, I'm like, yeah. I'm about to put this on everything. That's why I'm talking about the consistency, because I want people to... I also figured that out by working in my record store, right? So, you know, when you have a business, you got to be there. I had a small business, a record store, right? So I watched the people, what they looked for and what they brought. So when you look at NWA, the Ghetto Boys, all those things was dark. dark yep. yeah. They all wore black. Yeah. Yep. I'm an ice cream man. I wore white. I'm like, I'm about to light this up. <laughs> <laughs> people are going to see my stuff. And they, they, they ran to it. They look for the diamonds. Oh, give me that. They didn't even know what it was. Then I had good products. So you also got to have, that's what we talked about with the cereal, right? You got to have a good product. It could be in a brown paper bag, but that product got to be amazing to make people keep coming back. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, yeah. My question for you is now you're super successful. You're talking yeah. about integrity and yeah. having a right team around you. Yeah. When you were barely starting, because a, a lot of us are building our team. Yeah. What's important for you as far as hiring or firing yeah. your support team as far as tax guy, you know, advisors, yeah. things like that? What are you looking for? Man, I, I mean... I know y'all look at me, but I had to start to where you're going to fall and stumble. You got to learn from your mistakes or learn from other people's mistakes. I thought I had good people, local people doing my taxes. They end up being wrong. Mm -hmm. Got me in a lot of trouble. I had to hire professionals. You got to look for experts, not just friends and family members. Because everybody, oh, I want. So I'd be like, you, you want your homeboy to work with you. You want people to think that, oh, I want my family. Because like, you might say, oh, man, I want my cousin to be with me. You know, but your cousin really don't believe in what you're doing. Huh. So you're going to have bad business. So now you got to know when to cut people off. This, this as much as you want to hire people, you got to know how to fire people if you're going to be the boss. Mm -hmm. And so to play that role, I tell people all the time, I mean, the people around you have to protect the king. We playing chess, not checkers, because you jumping everywhere. The name of the game in chess is protect the king. If they're not going to protect the king, they don't need to be around you. Because mm -hmm. you got, everybody got to follow behind that person's dream. Think about it. Everybody on that team got to know we got a leader. This is our leader. How do we protect him or her? Right? What do we got to do for the team to win? Because if we going on this person, 
then we got to believe in them. So that's what made Bill Gates so strong. Everybody played their role. He brought experts along with him. The people that didn't believe, they fell off. And he didn't mind them leaving because I tell people all the time. So my coach told, taught me this a long time ago playing basketball. So I used to be worried I was going to get cut. So I'm going to look for my name on the list, right? The coach said, man, let me tell you something, son. I don't cut players. Players cut themselves. And most of these people are going to cut themselves out of your life. I have a question about, we talk a lot about momentum. Yeah. So when you told that story about having the one fan, yeah. for you, how, did, how do you build it? I know you said, like, I'm going to turn this into a million, but yeah. so the mindset was there, but what, what's your philosophy, your thoughts? But you on still had to get out and work because I always, yeah. I always told y'all too, fate without work is dead. Mm -hmm. So that one guy believed in me, but I realized I'm like, oh, I've got somebody to believe in me mm -hmm. that don't know me way from somewhere else. I'm going to get millions of other people to do that. And so when I realized that, like, that's like, you know, you, you, it's like playing sports, right? Once you hit a shot, you know you can hit another one. Yeah. You're like, oh, the ball went in. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel about business and creating people to come and buy your product or be with you to be with your brand or whatever. Like, once you get one person to believe, you could get more. It's on you. That's what I'm saying. If you have that integrity, I went out, told that guy, gave him a T-shirt. That's what he going to tell somebody else. So people think they need us. Think about it. I see y'all with y'all T-shirts and y'all brands. People, we are branding, right? Yeah. Guess what? Even if you go to one of these people's houses and say, here, here a T-shirt. This is my company. They're going to walk around with that. I don't care. They might not put it on. While you, they're going to walk around with that shirt. Somebody else is going to say, well, who's that? Oh, yeah, they gave me an insurance policy for, for such and such. And, oh, you got their number? I done did that plenty of times. I seen somebody else with something. Man, where you get that from? But we are afraid to invest in ourselves because we, we expect it to happen overnight. It don't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. and to me, I don't wait for an opportunity. I create it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to give me opportunity. I'm going to create it. Yeah. And so that, I just think that's the, that mentality. It's a mentality like, where it's like, you know what? I'm not taking no because Think about it. I went to the guy with the radio station every week with the same <laughs> record. He thought I was crazy. He probably said, man, what Tupac did, man? Get this crazy <laughs> But I showed him that, look, I believe in this. Then I got him to believe in it. Yeah. Then he played it. I got other people to believe in it. And that, I'm just be honest with y'all. I know people say, like, music is the biggest way to sell something. If I had an insurance company right now, I'd be taking these little ads out on these local channels, playing little music behind it, like just getting my name out there. Because people riding in their car, like, I'm, this, is, this is the easiest way. For y'all, them, them spots is so cheap. I'm looking, this is what I did with, with songs. I'm going to tell you all this, how I broke some records that I had, right? They got to play the record, a commercial for 60 seconds. I used the whole 60 seconds and then say whatever I want to sell at the end. So now I done broke a record because I'm playing the song. Then I'm going to say, oh, go buy this at such and such. That's the whole commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. it it's... We got to figure out other ways. Like, they tell me all the time, well, they ain't going to let you through the door. I'm like, well, I'm going to go through the chimney. I'm going to go through a window. <laughs> I'm going to find a way. I'm going to get in. In the house. You know? And so that's basically what, what it's about, y'all. It's like, you got to believe in you. I tell people all the time, my thing is I'm going to make the non-believers believe. That's it. That's in any business. But say, they say, well, P, how come you're so successful? Because I'm, I want to be successful as much as I want to breathe. That's how much I want to be successful. So that's how serious I take it. But most people don't. Right. So think about it. If you're not willing to invest in yourself and you don't believe in yourself, how are you going to get me to believe? That's what we're talking about. Okay, you're trying to sell me a pair of shoes, but you're not, you don't even wear it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, okay, you want to be my trainer, but you're not in shape. <laughs> 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 Let's be honest. So I'm like, <laughs> for real. Are uh, you telling me about, oh, well, yeah, P, I want to uh, do this with your money, but you don't have no money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And so those are the things that we have to look at and not be afraid to grow. You know, and most of us, we want that change. We, we want it. But like, you know, it's, it's easy to say this than actually really do it. And then you put, you know, we talked about this earlier, comparing yourself to other people. Well, such and such did this in a year. Okay, so what if it don't happen in that year? Just because it happened that way for them, it ain't going to happen that way for you. What are you going to do different to build your brand, to get other people to believe in it? Because we believe in something else because that's what it is. They already brainwashed us with that. 
Same thing I did with my cereal. It's like, okay, well, you know who Kellogg's is. You know all these other companies is. But guess what? You're going to know who I am because I'm the only black-owned brand. Think about it. And I take that serious. It's like, no, I, but I'm selling to everybody. I'm selling to blacks, whites, Asians, Latinos, but I'm a black-owned company. You could use that. Oh, I'm a, a woman-owned company. I'm a minority-owned company. You got to use what you need to get to get in there. Because think about it, a lot of these companies say, oh, yeah, we want to deal with diversity. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. They want stuff that to sell. Yeah. They want the money. That's what they want. That, that little stuff they're telling you, that's just a small part of them. Yeah. Do they really want that? People love LeBron because he could play. They don't care what color he is. You have to be able to utilize your strengths and then figure out what your weakness is and try to better yourself on that. But I utilize my strengths first. Last question, first and foremost, thanks for the wisdom and experience that yeah. you're bringing. In. And, you know, you know, we deal with life insurance and it has multiple facets, multiple uses. So I deal or specialize in the area of becoming your own bank, uninterrupted yeah. compound interest, getting yeah. your money to work for you simultaneously yeah. at the same time. Yeah. You talked about being brainwashed. Yeah. And we've been taught that banks are where we should put, place our money. Do you have any guidance or... or any expertise in that area about becoming I your own bank? I, I, I don't. It, that's the most important thing. The banks is not. I, we talked about this earlier. So the banks are going to take your money and, and, and go get 15 percent off of your money. Yep. Well, you put your money in the bank and you're probably going to get 5 percent. And the bank's going to take your money, like you said, compound interest and give it to an insurance company. Why you don't do it? So, I mean, you got to start thinking right now. I mean, people are starting to think people are because think about it. A lot of people don't want to listen. So we say, OK, well, you're only making five percent. But if you did this, you make 15 percent. But you would rather the bank to go take your money you put in the bank and go give it to an insurance company and make 15 percent when you could get those same type of policies yourself. You don't sound that smart to me. <laughs> <laughs> for real, I don't even need to sell you nothing else. No more. Like, for real, it's like, why am I sitting up here? <laughs> Talking, man, to, think, talking man, to a man, fool. Man, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be real. And, and, and we're dying every day. We don't even understand what this is because we, all we need to do, like we said, Google it then. Go on the Internet and Google it since we in an Internet world now we live in it. So use your Internet and Google what this is and then you can see. I don't think you guys have to keep trying to explain it to them. It's like, OK, let's show you this. Let's show you what people are making. And I think that's what we have to do because people want to see visual. Mm -hmm. Let's show them, okay, well, this guy take his money directly to the, the policies that I'm selling. Look all the stuff he got. Then he could go take a loan off the money that he has. Can you do that? The bank don't We want to give you a credit card, your credit messed up or whatever. <laughs> he, like, I would show him. That's the most important thing to show people visuals. Like, they want to see success stories. They want to see testimonies. You guys have to give them that. And I think you guys thinking you could say it to somebody, but no, listen. Oh, look, look, look what this guy just brought. He didn't buy that from the bank. The bank ain't going to give him this. Look, look, look what he did. So my thing is being able to show your customers. That's what I do. Like, I'm showing my people. Okay, look what I was able to make. Proof of concept. Proof of concept. That's it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.